you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just raise your hands to him just for a moment here. Just bless the Lord because he's worthy. He's worthy. We bless you, Lord. We praise you this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. <laughs> You're a good God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross. For raising again, sending out the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Holy Spirit, just come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. That's right. That's good. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Wow, God is good. I'd like you just put your hand on the shoulder of the person next to you. Let's just pray. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come. I pray the, the release of the Spirit of God here today. Father, I pray that you'd encourage and build and strengthen, Lord God. I pray for a fresh outpouring of the Spirit of God on people's lives. Release faith, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just say the word breakthrough. Say it again. Breakthrough. breakthrough. Amen. I believe God's going to give you a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. <laughs> Amen. You can go back towards your seats. Thank God. I think God wants to do some things today. Amen. Wow, praise God. How many appreciate our worship team? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> praise God. God is good. Uh, God is always good. Praise God. You know that God is always good? Yes. Even when He needs to bring an adjustment in my life, He's still good? Amen? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for coming out and worshiping God on a holiday weekend. Praise God. Amen? You can look to your left and your right, and you can say, see, these are the true men and women of God, see. <laughs> Just kidding, Internet, if you're watching. You're at family events, camping. Just kidding. Amen. Isn't God good? 
God is so good. We had a, a party yesterday for Brandon. We had uh, Bobby, you know, graduated from college, and, and that was exciting. And then uh, we did a kind of a celebration for him and Brandon. And, and uh, just raise your hand again if you graduated uh, this last week or you have a graduation this year, this, this, this time. Okay. Any others? All right. We lost some of our crowd. <laughs> I think they went downstairs. Or to McDonald's or something. I don't know. Uh, but we just want to just congratulate you again. That's such a huge thing. And we just pray God's best on you. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, God is just so good. And uh, if we'll listen to Him and do what He says, you know, if we do what this Word says, let me, let me take this out of here. Look at this. Oh, my Word. If we do what this thing says, how many know that we can have good success? Okay. How many know that if we do what this thing says, we can have good success? Yeah. Right? right? And you know that God is no respecter of persons, so it doesn't matter if you came from a rich family, poor family, if all your relatives were in jail. Because you got a hold of the truth of God, the Bible says that God, you... Uh, God will give you good success. Amen? It doesn't matter what nationality. You can even be from Norway. Well, let's exclude them. I'm Norwegian and German. Uh, and through the years, it's been amazing uh, learning how the promises of God stand up in the face of hard times whether you're having a marriage issue or whether you're having a financial issue, if you're having whatever it is, if you do what the Word says, if you work the Word, it'll work. Amen? If you work the Word, it'll what? Work. Yes. Amen. There's two words for word in the Bible. Well, there's actually three. There's graphe, which means printed text, okay? It's a, it's a book in a sense. There's printed words on paper, right? Riley, right? That's graphe. And then there's another word the Bible uses called logos. That means the, the expression, the will, the word of God. And we see that through prophets and all those uh, uh, you know, apostles. Uh, and we took the words, they're written down, and that's the logos. And the Bible says that Jesus was the Word. He was the Logos, and He became flesh, and He dwelt among us. Can you please explain that to me? I don't know how that happens, but that's what happened. And Jesus became the living expression of God Himself, the example of God, and also the example of the Spirit-filled life. Anything that Jesus did, He said, go and do likewise. Go and do Go and do, go and do, go and be, right? And then there's another word called rhema. And that's what I love. I love them all. I love the logos. I love it all. But in my, my life, I've been on a journey for years and years and years learning how to hear and utilize the rhema of God. And I love it. I love it when God interacts. Amen? Amen? Amen, David? Praise God. David and I, for years, used to do Tuesday night uh, healing and deliverance nights here. Uh, that was way back, a long time ago. And uh, a lot of times nobody would show up, you know, we'd just be sitting here with the crickets. And uh, it wasn't a meeting, it was just we were available if somebody wanted prayer. And, you know... Uh, we had a lady come one time. We had some fun times. We had encounters with different people, but we did that for years. And, uh, you know, God just wants to teach you stuff, right? How many know that God loves you? Amen. All right? So if you could picture uh, a family and you have a child, how much do you love that child, by the way? Are you just going to give it to the neighbors or any stranger that comes by and say, hey, watch this child? What's it? <laughs> well, for, 
first thing we need to know is that God is nuts about you. Amen? Here's, here's God, His own Son. He gave His own Son over you. How much does God love you? That's amazing. And you know, when you start getting a revelation of how much God loves you, you start understanding that how much God wants to interact with you. Amen? Anybody awake in here? I know it's a holiday weekend. Brian, you're probably out catching walleyes till four in the morning. No? Reinventing something. Brian is one of the smartest guys I've ever known in my life. He, he actually makes me nervous to be around. <laughs> uh, him and Einstein would be great friends. Except for you're a little more fun. <laughs> if you, <laughs> yeah, you work with Linda. That's right. Praise God. Anyways, do you believe that God loves you? You see, if you're going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about faith and answers to prayer and God interacting in your life. And one of the things I found that if I don't know that God is nuts about me, it's really hard to interact with the Spirit of God. If I always feel like I have to work up to it, if I have to buy His approval, if I have to somehow get His acceptance just to get in the arena. No, God loves me. Amen? Amen? We do need to come to Him, you know, before we were saved. We need to be broken. We need to come and say, hey, I am nothing without you. And I still say that now. But we have to know that God is crazy about you. He is nuts about you enough to that He said, I will give my only begotten Son for you. How many here would give a son for a neighbor? We don't have any hands. Okay, but that's, that's amazing love. That's love I can't comprehend. That is love I can't comprehend. So this word is powerful. Amen? The Bible says that Jesus Christ said, The Word put on flesh. What does God look like? How does God act? How does God think? How does God feel? Then we read about Jesus and Jesus was the expression of the heart of God. Isn't that amazing? Jesus Christ is perfect theology. How, did, how would God treat me in this situation? Look it up. How did Jesus treat the woman at the well? Remember when the woman came that was in adultery and Jesus picked up a stone and, and threw the first stone? Remember that? Hit her right in the head. Boom! You ever feel like that? No. What's the expression of the heart of God? Jesus came to express the heart of the Father. Isn't that amazing? We can make things so complicated. God's like, hey, here's the gospel. And then we sit down and we try to, you know, tear it apart, rip it apart, rebuild it, fashion it, so no one can understand it and no one can get there. And then we try to give it to people and say, hey, come join our church. No. It's simple. That's why he said we need childlike faith, not childish. Big difference. Ever meet someone childish? We need to have childlike faith. God made it simple. God made it simple. God made it simple. God made it simple. All right. I want to jump into some things here. Hopefully I can give you a few nuggets here. But I want to give you a few quotes, first of all. Are you ready? Yes. Unbelief is safe because it takes no risks and gets what it expects. Right? Revelation from Scripture must take us to an encounter with God or it will only serve to make us more religious. I want an encounter with God when I study the Word. You guys like encounters? How many believe that we serve a living God? 
You ever had an encounter with God? I love encounters. You can have such a desire for more, and it's a little scary because if you have a huge desire for more, the Bible promises that He'll give you more. He'll meet you. He'll fill your cup. It's up to you to determine the size of the cup. Right? God wants to show Himself to you. I was in a time of seeking the Lord, and I just wanted more. You ever want more? I love good lessons. I love good teaching. I love to spend time in worship. Um, but I, I was in a season of wanting more, and I'm always in that season. Amen? But I remember I was praying one day, and the Lord spoke to me, and He said, uh, I want you to drive to the cities and go to a conference. How many know that God can speak like that? Do you think that? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Remember Noah? Go build an ark. What's an ark? Can you imagine? There are, there's just nobody has done this before. But God spoke. That's a rhema word. See, it's a living word from God. God spoke. Faith came into Noah, and he didn't care who said what. He didn't care if no one else had built an ark before. He took the time, and he built an ark. When you hear the Word of God, something happens, faith comes with it, and you're able to follow through. Um, Abraham, leave your country. He just began to believe God, and God began to do amazing things in his life. And we need to have those encounters. And, and I remember I was just so hungry for the, the things of God, just filled with a desire for more. And uh, Randy Clark was in the cities, and... Uh, and, I, and the Lord said, he said, go to that meeting, and I'm going to give you something. And that's a good word from God. Amen? So I went there and, and, uh, with, a, with another gentleman, and, and uh, I, I came to hear some good teaching and stuff, but I, I just came to receive more from the Lord. And uh, so I went there, and, and I got in there, and I listened, to, and uh, wonderful preaching, and I was so inspired. And then he got all done, and he just walked off stage. And I thought, oh! I wanted prayer. I wanted a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. I only had time to be there, you know, the first few sessions. So later on, he came back out, and he preached the part two. And, and he said, hey, he said, uh, usually I wait till later on to do a time of, imp of impartation. But he said, I really feel the pull in the room. And he preached for a while. You guys know who Randy Clark is? Randy Clark is probably one of the, the leading people today in the area of, of uh, healing the sick and all that kind of thing. Super powerful guy that way. He just has strong faith. So I went there and, and, uh, and uh, he preached again and then he did a time of impartation. And, and uh, I had talked to him for just a minute between sessions. I said, Lord, if it's possible, I would like to talk to him. And I never pushed myself on a speaker. Don't do that. Don't be... You know, don't interrupt somebody. Don't push your way in. Uh, don't, don't do that. Um, treat people with honor. So I, the Lord opened up the door. I talked to him for just a minute. Talked a little bit about Argentina. I was going to invite him down. And he said he'd come sometime if, if God led. And so then he preached again. And then as he's preaching, he says, I just feel that pull to do the time of impartation. I like impartation. That's why I went there. And uh, he, said, he said, why don't we just all gather around the front and we'll just start praying for people. And within about a second and a half, the whole place filled, the whole altar is a huge place. There's probably 500 people around the altar. And by the time I got out, I was way up the aisle, and I thought, oh boy, this is going to be rough. But the Lord said, I'm going to give you something. How many know when God speaks, God speaks? Remember when Jesus told the disciples, he said, hey, go to the other side. And boy, they heard the voice of God. They had just multiplied bread, right? They fed 5,000 people. And then they get in a boat. And then a storm comes, contrary winds, and right away they begin to doubt. 
And so many times when God speaks, there is a test that comes with it. The enemy will come with contrary winds to try to, dis, to, uh, to put the fire out, to kill your faith. Right? Did they make it across? Yeah. Yes. Some people believe that the contrary winds was to test them and try to push them back because if you remember, they go and then they encounter the demoniac and they believe that there was a spiritual warfare going on because the demoniac, when he got set free, that whole area got saved. How many know that there is a real devil and there's a real God and there's no contest? I like that when people first get into spiritual warfare, uh, cast out spirits and that kind of thing. Oh, brother, you got to understand how this stuff works. Oh. <laughs> they wrestle with some guy and he's flopping around and screaming and all that and four people are holding the person down. And, and see, they just don't understand authority. If I turn all the lights off in this room and then there's complete darkness and if I hold up one little candle, guess what? That candle will begin to lighten up that room. When I turn the light switch on, there's no contest. The light is just here. Amen? Amen. When you face the enemy, there's no contest if you know who you are in Christ. Right? The contest is right here and right here. So I'm sitting in the crowd and, and, and uh, I tried to scramble to the front and I was up in the aisle and I, there's like 500 people between me and Randy Clark and the Lord just reminded me, he said, I told you to come here and you obeyed, don't worry about it. It's going to take more than concrete to get in my way. I was like, that's a good word. So I'm there and all of a sudden he starts praying for people. And he stops, and he says, where's that guy that goes to Argentina? And he seen me way up the aisle, and he walked all the way through the crowd, and he blew on me, and he went to touch me. I don't know what happened after that, because the lights went out. <laughs> and I hit the deck. An hour later, I woke up. Everybody was gone. I couldn't believe it. The lights were dim. I was gone for an hour. And when I woke up, the power of God kept coming in surges, and I would shake on the floor. And it hurt so bad uh, in a good way. But the violent, in a sense, presence of God, I would shake on the floor. And this went on for probably, an, uh, once I woke up, probably another hour or so, and I almost begged God to stop. But the sweet presence of God was so heavy that I, I, just, I just didn't dare tell him to stop. And finally, after maybe, an, uh, uh, an, uh, I don't remember how long it was, I finally got up, got my composure, and I was just all disheveled. I mean, my hair's all over the place, and, and uh, kind of like every day. But uh, I, I remember I walked out of that auditorium, and there was a big leather couch there. And I just had to get my head. I mean, this encounter with God was tremendous. I heard the voice of God speak to me. There was things going on. And I sat on this big leather couch out in the foyer. And this young guy came out of nowhere. And he came and sat by me. And he starts trying to teach me about, you know, the, hearing the voice of God and everything. And that was great. But I was not interested at the time. I was just like, oh, my Lord. I just encountered God. And this guy's got. You ever notice? You ever try to talk to someone that's not listening? So the presence of God was so strong. So I, I looked at him, and the Lord said, "Go like this, touch him in the shoulder." So I looked at him, and I went, and I touched him in the shoulder. And when I touched him, the power of God hit him. Whatever I was experiencing fell on him. And he looked at me, and he started to cry, and then he fell on the floor, and he laid there until I left. <laughs> How many know that sometimes God doesn't work in the logical ways, you know? 
All right. But God spoke to me, and I went, and it happened. That's a rhema word. Amen? So here's another quote. Faith doesn't deny a problem's existence. It denies it a place of influence. Get a hold of that. You serve an almighty God. Amen? We need to get a hold of, number one, God loves me. God loves you. And number two, the word works. When you take a scripture and uh, maybe you're praying for a, a mate or you're praying for a job, you're praying for something, and you, you begin to take that word and you begin to declare that word over your situation. And how many know that the Bible says that God watches over His word? He does. And you can begin to declare that scripture over your situation and declare it over your situation and declare it over your situation. And all of a sudden, something will shift on the inside and faith will come and you'll get your answer. Is that true? So faith doesn't deny a problem's existence. It denies it a place of influence. Here's something that's very interesting. Um, we have hope. How many know what hope is? Right? Hope. Hope is good. It's the expectation for future good. It's a good thing coming, right? We need to have hope. Do you have hope, Foster? You have hope? Can I have some? Okay. We need to have hope. Hope is good. How many know hope is good? Hope. I hope something good happens. I hope I get a raise. I hope I get a job. Hope I can pay my bills. And hope is really good. But God wants to take us past hope. You see, before you're saved, you don't even have hope. All of a sudden, now hope comes. But God wants to teach you faith. You see, in, when you're a child, you walk in hope. I hope Mama feeds me. And the Bible says in 1 John that there are actually three levels of growth in our walk with God. There's a child. There's a young man, and there's a father. Say father. Okay? Now, that doesn't matter that you're male or female. It just means a spiritually mature man or woman of God. You look at Paul. Paul was a father in the faith. He was unwavering. He was a man of God. And when you're a child, you live in hope. You live in hope. In the Old Testament, you see when God took the people out of Israel, or out of Egypt... They came, He fed all their needs, He took care of them. And, but once they walked into the promised land, the Bible says that then they needed to conquer it. They had to plant, they had to go get food, they had to, but God's blessing was there, but they had to take action to achieve it. See, that's maturity. So children live in hope, say hope. hope. And hope is good. But I'm after faith. I want to know how to change things. I want to see the hand of God come and move mountains. That's faith. It takes faith. Say faith. faith. It's impossible to even please God without faith. Try to understand faith. It's real simple, but yet it's complicated. Faith, the Bible says, if you have faith, you can even move a mountain. You can say, go from here to there. Let's try that. Let's try, uh, let's see here. Let's, let's move Foster. Ready? No, but faith is powerful. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hupostasius, the down payment, the title deed, uh, the title deed. When I order a pizza, I go to the counter... I pay the money. They give me a receipt. I walk to my table. I get a receipt, not a pizza. But I went and I did what I needed to do. They give me that. And that is the receipt that my pizza's coming, right? So I sit there and they say, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to eat pizza. What do you have? A piece of paper. <laughs> you have silverware. You have a napkin. What are you going to do? I'm going to eat pizza. Looks like you have just a piece of paper. People say, you know, you're crazy to wait on God and to, to think God's going to answer your prayer. What do you have? Take out a piece of paper from my Bible. Show them a scripture. 
There was a girl that I knew years ago that she didn't have any money and she needed a car. And she kept praying and saying, Lord, I need a car and I want a big car and I want a blue car. And she came and told me, she said, God's going to give me a big car and a blue car. And she told other people and people would laugh and say, yeah, whatever. Maybe you need to, you know, work some overtime, do some things, and which is good. And people would make fun of her. This is a number of years back. And every time I seen her, she'd come up and she said, God's going to give me that car. I said, do you know what it looks like? I sure do. It's a big car. It's blue. Baby blue. And I remember people would mock her when she wasn't around, and they kept laughing at this thing. People would say what she needs to do is the practical. You need to da But she had a hard time uh, covering her bills, paying her rent, and she was very good steward with her money. She wasn't a waster, and she kept uh, declaring the word of God. And, you know, after about a month and a half, and after people were ridiculing her, see, the contrary wins, somebody came up from her church that did not hear about it and came up and said, Hey, God, put this on our heart. We're going to go trade in our car, but we felt that we should just give it to someone that we knew. And she said, really? Yeah, we'd like to just give our car. And so she says, what color is it? (laughs) Not just thank you. And he said, it's an older car. It's from the south. It was actually mint. But it was like a 82 or something. It was really old, but it was perfect shape. Big station wagon. Remember those, the big ones? I mean the huge ones. We'd call it a camper now. (laughs) And you know what? It was baby blue. And I tell you what, people were scared of that woman after that. (laughs) So you have hope. Hope is good. Hope keeps you out of depression. Things are going to happen. Good things are going to happen. But faith moves mountains. And that's what I want. I want to hear God and do what He says and watch it happen. Anybody awake? It's amazing the difference between hope and faith. We've had times that money has been tight in the church. And we all need to do our part. We need to pay our tithes. We need to worship God in that area. Amen? But sometimes... The Lord will remind me, he'll say, how is your faith doing? And I'll say, not good this week. Just pour on some grace. And the Lord will say, I want you to contend in faith and see what happens. So I'll go and I'll start praying. I'll seek the Lord. God will begin to stir my faith. The next thing you know, I hear the voice of God come. And when I get that, I know that it's done. I know that I have an answer to prayer. When I feel that I'm giving birth in here, I'll give it birth out here. Amen? We need to learn how to do that. It doesn't matter what it is. When you have faith in God, God can supply your need. When you have faith in God, God can come through and do something that's supernatural in your life. Anybody ever hear a dynamic story about a missionary or somebody somewhere else? I don't want you to look at it that way anymore. I want you to look at that as a story in your own life. Amen? The Lord taught me a long time ago. He said, "If what I'll do for one person, I'll do for you too. You can get faith for it. Remember, a missionary told me years ago, he said this. He said, God will give it to you if you can believe for it. Amen? Come on! Amen. All right, so we have hope. Say hope. We have faith. Here's another thing. Faith and fear operate out of the same vain. Did you know that? Hope and faith are twin brothers. I'm sorry, not hope. Faith and fear are twin brothers. Faith is having a determination knowing that God is going to come through and change things. You know it. Fear is the antip Anticipation for negative. 
You ever been around someone that's full of fears? I don't go in a boat because it could sink and I could die. What? You ever been around someone full of fear? How about a, a, a parent full of fear? What do they do the way they raise their kids? Can't, 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 can't. Turn 18. Beow! <laughs> fear is not fun! Anybody have a fear in here? I've had fears. I've had to face my fears, though. Amen? Uh, I remember years ago, I used to travel a real lot in business, and sometimes if you fly overseas and all that, you get real nervous sometimes. You think, my Lord, you ever been nervous on a plane? I love that when the plane is flying and everything's peaceful, and then all of a sudden it drops like 300 feet. <laughs> You can always tell the believers on the plane. No? <laughs> and I remember I was praying one day, and I, I was really, I didn't like that. I remember the Lord spoke to me on the plane. He said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Like sitting there full of fear is actually going to help your ride? I was on a, we had a, a private jet for a while at the, uh, when I worked at uh, Rice Lake Wayne there. They think they still do there. And I was flying out in the East Coast, and uh, it, was, it was just a neat plane, um, and I was friends with a pilot there, and uh, he was such a nice guy, and we, it never looked scared at all, and I'd sit in the cockpit with him sometimes. And it, it's a real good thing as a pilot not to look nervous. <clears throat> If you want to see when to panic on an airplane ride, <clears throat> if you see the pilot nervous or the stewardess, it's time to buckle up. <laughs> so I'm flying out to the East Coast, and I'm a professional. And I'm a man of God. <laughs> and we had a wonderful conversation, you know, and I tried to interject things of God. And uh, we get out there, and now there's a storm. And he's like, oh, my Lord. He says, I think I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> I said, what? So we go into Rhode Island, and we go over the ocean, and we come down, and the wind is so strong. That it, uh, and I looked. I, I should have never done this. I looked out the window, and I can see the waves just below us. And they're huge. Lord, where are you? And the plane's doing this. And I looked at him and I thought, no, he looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. God will take care of us. I look like a man of faith. We come across and the wind hits us all of a sudden. And we come over land and he pulls up because we were going to crash. And he goes around again. I said, you're going to go again? I said, let's just get out of here. He said, no. He said, we can do this. Goes around again, comes over the ocean. Comes around again. We're getting really close to the water again. I mean, we're talking, it probably felt closer than what we were, but I could see the waves. And the wind's going. Rah, 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 I look at him, and he's still got his composure. I'm like, praise God. Brother, just trust God. We come in, second time. The wind goes, whoosh! And I'm telling you now, I'm digging for faith. This really happened. They, they, they kind of yelled at us over the thing, and he pulled up, and he, he circled around again. We went over the ocean a third time, and the wind was really bad. Here we are in the small craft, and I looked at him, and he had sweat dripping off his nose <laughs> and off his chin. And I remember I sat there and I said, Okay, God, into your hands I commit my spirit. <laughs> I was really nervous. But 
all of a sudden, I felt like I had faith. It was amazing. Uh, it was really scary. But all of a sudden, I, I, it was like I knew that God was with me. And the guy had sweat dripping off his nose. And I thought, this will be the last time I sit in the front. <laughs> I'd rather not be in the know, listening to the radio. Pull up, you're going to crash. They didn't say crash, but pull up. We landed and we were okay. All right, you have hope. Say hope. Hope. And you have faith. When you have faith, I'm telling you something. I don't care. When you have faith, I don't care how dark it looks. And you're going to go through different times in your life. Remember the wind and the waves? When Jesus raised up and he rebuked the wind and the waves, because they said, don't you care if we perish? Remember that? Don't you care if we perish? Jesus, you know, God sent his own son to die for you. Of course he cares, right? But sometimes the storm can mask the word. Sometimes the storm can dilute your faith, in a sense. And what God wanted the disciples to do in the boat there is to rise up in faith and take authority over the storm. Or the other picture is this. Hey, we're just going to make it through the storm. We're going to make it because God is with us. Fear will do terrible things to you. And we need to get back to faith. Hope is good, but we need faith. We need true faith in God. Amen? All right, let me just give you two scriptures, and we're going to wrap up. I was going to give you actually ten points on faith today. But it's a holiday weekend, you know. All right. But faith is incredible. Uh, Faith is incredible. When you learn faith and you know that impossibilities must yield to faith, it's incredible. It changes your whole life. It does. You have a son or daughter away from God in sin, I want you to know you can have faith and God can turn their life around. I don't care how dark. I don't care how lost. Uh, We've seen people that were in drugs that were, uh, I mean, in the, the, the pit. And a believing family began to get some faith, begin to declare the word of God, begin to do some spiritual warfare, begin to love in faith. Amen? And all of a sudden, one day, they come and they say, hey, I need to get my life together. Mom, Dad, would you help me? How many know that God can do that? We need to have some faith in God. Maybe you say, my marathon's been long, and I've had, tried to have faith. And you need to just rest. You need to get around the body. You need to have some corporate faith for people to build you back up so you can stand up again and say, okay, now I'm ready to face that, that wind again. The body is wonderful to be around. That's why the Bible says, don't stop coming to church, right? Don't forsake the, the, the gathering of the saints. Amen? Don't forsake that. Why? We need corporate faith. We need each other's faith. When my faith is weak, I need your faith. When my faith is weak, I need Randall's faith. I need, I need Jerry's faith. I need your faith. Amen? All right. Faith. Um, there's a story about the persistent widow. Remember that? She wouldn't quit. So the wicked judge says, My Lord, she won't quit. I need to give her what she wants. And Jesus was kind of joking a little bit when he said that. I believe. He was trying to teach them something. Persistence in faith will win. I'd like you to say that. Persistence in faith, Persistence in faith will win. Will win. Amen. Another scripture, the Bible says, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing. We're the ones that change it and say, well, God can do that, but he can't do this. Here's James 1, 6 and 7, talking about the wind and the waves. This is the last scripture I'm going to do. But let him in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like the wave of a sea, Driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. We need to have persistence in our faith.
We need to have hope, but I don't want you to just live in hope. Hope is for children. Hope is always good. But I want to see people come into faith. People that learn how to pray, do battle, stand against the wind, and declare the Word of God over their family, over their finances. Many times when I've needed money, God has come through. When other people laughed, I stayed the course as hard as it was. And I've seen the hand of God come through. We've seen people healed of all kinds of diseases through the year. And it doesn't come through hope. It comes through faith. It comes through faith. Amen? Amen. How many is going to take some faith? <clears throat> if you're born again, the Bible says when you're born again, God puts faith in you. How many have faith? But Jesus said, where is your faith? Get it out of the closet. Get it out of the drawer. Get it out of your shoe. Where's your faith? So what are you facing today? What are you facing? Where's your faith? Right? Where's your faith? Get some faith. How big is your God? Sometimes you need to make God bigger than your problem. Amen? You need to know that God loves you. That was the first point. You have to know that God loves you. Number two, hope is good. Faith is better. Number three, don't get caught up in fear. Fear will choke your faith. Fear will choke your faith. Fear will choke your faith. Some people say, well, it's been too long. I've given up. No. Get around corporate faith. Have others believe for you then. Amen? And lastly, you can have faith for whatever you're facing. Amen? I'd like you to stand up. Amen. Isn't God good? Yeah. Amen. God is good. Uh, there's so many wonderful stories through the years. Uh, I, I, I love Sheldon and Elaine. Where are they? Back from the mission field, praise God. We love them. But if you want to see faith, just spend some time with them. Uh, they've served God in the mission field, weren't guaranteed $1. And God supplied their needs. They went to the mission field with not just the two of them, but with a whole bunch of kids. How many know that kids cost money? <laughs> but what they had is they had a word from God. See, I'll take the word that God speaks to me, the rhema word, over any bank account, stocks, bonds, anything. I'll take the word of God. It's more valuable than anything else. Because God himself will see that he fulfills it. There's some people here that are stirring, that, that need faith to be stirred in their life again. You need faith again. You're tired. The journey's been long. God wants to renew your faith. He wants to give you new faith to revive it. Just close your eyes for a moment. Holy Spirit, I pray you just come. Lord, we're never too young, too old. People need to hear today that your best days are still in front of you. Your best days are still in front of you. Life is not over yet. God's going to give you new faith today. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, just come. Holy Spirit, just come. Holy Spirit, come. If you want to press into the Lord and you just want a fresh touch from God, I want you to come forward. Just go ahead. Just come forward. Let God touch you. If you need others to pray with you, to, to, to join with you in a marathon where you say, my faith is tired, I want you to come forward. Take a step of faith. God's going to open up some doors. He's going to renew some faith. Ha, ha, ha. 
Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. I see some people have been praying for family, and you've been on a long journey. God is going to renew your faith. I just see that real plain. It's just like it's been a long time. I want to declare to you that God's arm is not too short. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Let's go ahead, press in. Press in. Press in. I need some cell leaders to come up here. I want you to come up and pray for some people. If you need a financial breakthrough, I keep seeing that in the room. I just want you to know that you don't have to make, you don't have to have it make sense in your head. What you need to do is get your faith alive in God again. Let your faith come alive. Amen? All right. The Lord, for those that uh, didn't come up, I just pray, Lord God, you'd be with them. I pray that they would have an awesome week in you. Let them celebrate with their families this weekend. Lord God, we pray for all the the, the vets, Lord God, the, the veterans, Lord God. And, and Lord God, we pray that you just honor them and bless them, Lord God, all the military, God. But Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, that you're a good God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. Amen. If you need to leave, go ahead. God bless you. Otherwise, I just want you to press in and let God touch you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We need some cell leaders up here. Thank you, Lord God. Pastor Casey, just start praying for people. Thank you, Lord God. Elaine? Elaine? 